difficult question to which I don't think I can give a definitive answer. But I can help answer the question by explaining what this entails. So it actually entails an understanding of several things. Um, firstly, the question of love. What is love? Secondly, the question of your place in love as the lover. And thirdly, the place of Sha as the beloved. So let's go first to what is love. So what does it mean to be in love? And I think that what it means has been diluted by our desire for specificity in our modern sensibilities. Yet, I would argue um, that now more than ever, like the word, the catch-all term love, um, is a reference for different types of loving relationships put together um, as one. So let's talk about what love is first in the context of Eros. And to this, I'd say that love covers even to the extent of yung crush ko siya, or yung shit, kinikilig ako pag nakikita ko siya. I, I, like, even to the extent of this puppy love, or the crush ko it, in crush ko it, crush ko it mentality, um, I think um, that yes, this is a manifestation of love um, to its lower degrees. Um, because it entails something that was discussed, for example, in the Phaedros, of how you are captivated, and how and as paradoxical as the word captivated is, captivated stemming from the word captive, meaning you are entrapped, but at the same time, the experience you feel isn't about being entrapped, but rather of being more motivated, more inspired. Um, I like how it is phrased in Tagalog, um, the, this paradox. Um, you could say that it's um, yung bugso ng puso, pero kabig ng bibdib. Um There is that confusion. Um, that is, at the same time, a manifestation of something that you cannot grasp yet. Um, yet, at the same time, we see that even if this experience is easily accessible um, in terms of physical beauty, kasi ang dali na pag may dumaan na maganda dyan sa harap mo, you'd go, shit, grab it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you see that um, this being captivated by the physical is not going to be enough. And as was discussed in the Ascent by Socrates, um, there will be um, a need to transcend this physicality. And also in the discussions of um, Aristotle yeah. and, and Plato, um, that the physical isn't going to last there forever. And so there should be um, a longing for or a desire for something which is greater. And that is that of the soul, that of, is of who this person really is. So that is the experience of love as Eros. Now, going on to phili philia, I think that the modern con conception of love has borrows a lot from philia as well because of the social configuration of companionship that necessarily accompanies love in our modern sensibilities. Because it's not, I, I don't know how the Greeks did it in their day, but it's not, I think that it's more this time that um, you stick to this person that you love for the rest of your life. So there is this um, sense of foreverness, and in that foreverness, a necessity for the capacity for companionship. So just like what, we, what Aristotle did in his discussion of friendship, there should be a striving for the perfection in love. And this is what I think characterizes what being in love is. It is to be in the process of aiming to perfect the experience of one's love. So this entails, as in our discussion of friendship, sameness in character and virtue. Because you cannot be companions with this person forever if you are not of like virtue. And clearly there is, despite having love at first and for the most part, about being in the now, loving in the now, there is a certain future-orientedness to it. To which um, a lot of I, it is a common sensibility for a lot of people to say that if I can see a future with this person, di marahil siya na nga. Um, yeah, so that entails a sense of seeing yourself in the future with this person in terms of perhaps coordinated life plans or whatnot. But there is a second problem that arises here. Well, but what is there for my future? Because the future is always uncertain. So to answer that, we move into the second part of my discussion of your role as the lover um, in the loving relationship.
So answering the question isn't fully contingent on love or on the beloved itself. It is as much a question for the lover. Um, loving is um, the pers if loving is the pursuit of perfection of the lover and the beloved, then the pursuit can only be engaged in when one knows in himself that he is ready to engage in seeking this perfection. So this in so this entails um, having developed oneself to a level of esteem worthy of the beloved, in character, ready for the pursuit of love and seeking it um, in its fullness. Um, and this entails, for instance, that a lot has to do with timing. Because if you think about it, you can say that there are two perfect, two, there are two people who are perfect for each other. But had they met each other at the wrong time in each other's lives, then you'd probably say that they were not so perfect for each other after all. Um, <coughs> so with that, the person, the lover, um, should have the conviction in his capacity for self-constance despite a full understanding of the uncertainty of the future. Um, in the words of a friend of mine, um, finding the one isn't just about finding the one for you, but it is also about being ready enough to be the one for the other person. Now, having answered that yes, you are ready to embark in the perfection, um, in seeking the perfection of the loving relationship, then the question then arises, who is she? Or what characteristics should she have? And it is so easy for us, uh, Yeah, and this is where I enter to the discussion of the beloved, it is so easy for us to think of the beloved as perfection, to hope that there is someone out there who is absolutely perfect for us. But the question is, need she be perfect? And my answer is, of course not. Um, for despite Aristophanes in his discussion, you are not souls once perfect, split in two and scattered, seeking to find that perfect peace that will complete us again. In fact, we are all just souls, in our own ways broken, who despite the brokenness that surrounds us, finds beauty and is captivated still. And I think that rather than thinking that there is a perfect out there that we can just plug into, there is more comfort in the idea of being able to destine yourself towards perfection despite the brokenness of the world and the imperfection that is yourself and your beloved. So, yeah, my claim here is that there is no single person out there that is perfect for you not before you met them, most especially. There is no one out there who is perfect for you in the beginning. Yet, what will make that person perfect for you is you embarking on this journey together. Um, to which, if you are unlucky, though breakups and rejections will always feel like it is the end of the world, by knowing that there is no one person out there who's perfect for you, it's easy to hope that this, in actuality, really isn't. And yet, if you are lucky, um, you will have that opportunity, if you and she does so choose, um, to seek perfection together. And I think that is beautiful. So going back to the question, paano malalaman kung siya na nga? In reality, I don't know. But you will. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.